Welcome to our example on how to create tables using ratios. In this example, you're going to learn how to create a table of equivalent ratios and then use those values to answer questions. Be sure you watch this a couple of times, take notes, and when you need to, pause and restart. In this example, we're going to use a table to show our equivalent ratios. In this problem, an art teacher is using water and flour to make paper mache. Paper mache is what we use to make piñatas or other um, art projects. They're going to mix flour and water, and for every two cups of water, she needs to mix in three cups of flour to make the paste. Okay. We've got this ratio relationship, two cups of water to three cups of flour. What does this ratio mean? For every two cups of water, there are three cups of flour. That means the ratio of 2 to 3. It means every time we have a set of 2 cups of water, then we need 3 cups of flour. It's worded this way because we might want more than just one batch of paper mache. We might want to make 2 batches, or 3 batches, or 5 batches, depending on how much we need to make. So we can start with the ratio 2 cups of water for every three cups of flour. Can we list all of the possible recipes for this mixture and order in a table? Let's start with a ratio that uses the smallest whole numbers. Okay, is there an equivalent ratio that would use whole numbers smaller than two to three? Not really, because there's no number that we can divide two by and also divide three by and get whole numbers other than one. So 2 to 3 are our smallest whole numbers. What would be the next possibility if we were using only whole numbers? For every 2 cups of water, there are 3 cups of flour. So what if I add another 2 cups of water? That would give me a total of 4 cups of water. How many cups of flour would I need to use? That's right, because for every two cups of water I add, I have to add three cups of flour. So that gives me the ratio four to six. What about if I add another two cups of water? Now how many cups of water do I have? That's right, six. And if I add two cups of water, I need to add another three cups of flour. I have another equivalent ratio, six to nine. I can keep going, adding two cups of water every time and three cups of flour until I have my table filled out. Now I have a list of five equivalent ratios. Let's find the value of each ratio. The value of our first ratio of 2 to 3 is 2 divided by 3, or 2 thirds. The value of my ratio 4 to 6 is 4 divided by 6, which is the same as 2 to 3, 2 thirds. My ratio of 6 to 9 has a value of 6 ninths. If we simplify that fraction, we get two-thirds. So far, each ratio has had the same value. That's what makes something equivalent. If ratios are equivalent, then they have the same value. And if I finish this up, we see that all five ratios have the same value, so all five ratios are equivalent. Can anyone think of a question that we might have at the beginning of this that can be answered by our table? In your homework tonight, you'll be asked to pose a question that could be answered by this table. Give it a try.
Here's another example where we can create a table using equivalent ratios. Javier has a new job designing websites. He is paid at a rate of $700 for every three pages of web content that he builds. So here's our ratio. $700 for every three pages. $700 for every three pages of content he builds. We can enter that into the table because there isn't a smaller whole number ratio. We can't divide 700 by 3. So if he builds three pages, he gets paid $700. What do you think the next one will be? What if he builds six pages? Adding three each time, what if he builds nine pages? Or twelve pages? Or fifteen pages? Or eighteen pages? How about twenty-one? Or twenty-four? In this table, to make whole number equivalent ratios, we've added three each time. Or well, we've multiplied three by the location. Three times one, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, 3 times 4, 3 times 5, 3 times 6, 3 times 7, 3 times 8. If he builds 6 web pages, he's going to get paid $1,400, 2 times 700. If he builds 9 web pages, He's going to be paid $2,100, $2,100. If he builds 12 web pages, now we need to multiply 700 times 4 to get $2,800. And we can finish out the table each time adding $700 or we can look at it as multiplying 700 times the position. So this would be 700 times 5, $3,500. 700 times 6, $4,200. 700 times 7, $4,900. Or 700 times 8, $5,600. If Javier is saving up to purchase a used car that costs $4,200, how many web pages will Javier need to build before he can pay for the car? We can look at our table to answer this question. Here's $4,200. He needs to build 18 pages. These tables can help us answer questions like this. So that's how we create a table using equivalent ratios. You can see that a table is a useful way of answering questions based on equivalent ratios. In the problem, we used the table to answer the question, how many web pages does Javier need to build? For your homework, you're going to have to pose a question that could be answered about the table that we saw in example one. Some questions might include how much flour we need, or how much water we need based on what we already have. Watch the video again, think about your answers, and finish your homework. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.